Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 1984 American comedy horror film called Gremlins. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. In Chinatown, Rand Peltzer, an inventor, is looking to sell some goods and maybe buy a Christmas gift for his son. He goes into a shop and has a look around. He tries to sell his bathroom buddy invention to the proprietor, an old Chinese man. He does a sales pitch but is distracted by a chuckling sound from the back of the store. He lifts a cover and sees a mogwai. He tries to buy it but the proprietor says that he will not sell it at any price. The old man's grandson meets Rand outside and sells him the mogwai as they need the money. He also leaves him with three instructions. Avoid the light, don't let him get wet, and never feed him after midnight. Billy Peltzer can't start his car. His neighbor, Mr. Futterman, offers to help but Billy declines. Mr. Futterman says that these foreign cars are all poor quality. Billy leaves on foot with his dog Barney. He arrives at the bank for work and hides Barney under his desk. His co-worker Kate asks him to sign a petition to make Dory's Tavern a landmark. Miss Deagle, a local property owner in town, is trying to have its lease rescinded as she says it's a dive. At the moment, Miss Deagle is walking along the street carrying a plastic snowman head. She is very angry. A lady outside the bank asks her to give them a little more time to pay their rent, but she refuses. Inside the bank, she tells Billy that his dog broke her expensive snowman. He offers to reimburse her, but she says that she wants the dog to have him put to sleep. Barney jumps over the counter and attacks her. The bank manager apologizes and is backed up by his deputy, Gerald. Later, in Dory's tavern, Billy is drawing cartoons. Gerald arrives and tells him that he needs to sort his life out. Kate is working there as well, and Gerald invites her for dinner, but she refuses. At home, Billy's mom is making dinner and watching a movie. She seems sad because she had a phone call from Miss Deagle, but doesn't bother Billy with the details. Rand arrives home from his trip. He gives Billy a gift, but he has to open it now. They dim the lights and Billy unwraps the box containing the mogwai. Billy cradles it as Rand says that he calls him Gizmo. His mom tries to make a photo and the flash startles Gizmo. Rand tells Billy the rules. Later that night, Billy is playing with an electronic keyboard while Gizmo sings along. Billy, Barney, and Gizmo all snuggle up and go to sleep together. The next morning, Billy's friend Pete delivers a Christmas tree. Gizmo is watching TV and Billy introduces him to Pete. Pete loves him and wants one. He asks if he can hold him, but in his haste, he knocks over a jar of water. Gizmo screams as five balls of fur pop out of his back and five more mogwai emerge. One of them has a stripe on its head. Pete goes to stroke it, but it tries to bite him. Gizmo looks really sad. Billy goes to see his dad to tell him what happened. The other mogwai are badly behaved and Stripe seems to be the leader. Rand has ideas about selling them to every household in America. That night, Billy wakes up. He can't find Barney. He finds him outside tied up with Christmas lights. The mogwai are giggling, but Billy blames Miss Deagle. Rand suggests taking Barney away with him for a couple of days on his trip to an inventor's convention. The next day, Billy takes one of the mogwai to see Mr. Hansen, a science teacher at the school. He adds one drop of water to the mogwai and another one emerges. Mr. Hansen keeps one with him to study. That night, Kate is closing Dory's tavern and Billy comes to meet her. Mr. Futterman is the last customer and he drunkenly talks about gremlins and the foreign cars. Kate convinces him to walk home rather than drive. Billy and Kate walk home together and he says that she handled him well. She tells him that she doesn't like Christmas. He can't believe it and she gets a little angry because that is everyone's reaction. He apologizes and asks her out on a date. She says yes. Late that night, the new mogwai are crying for food. Billy looks at the clock. It's only 11.35, so he goes to fetch them a snack. As he leaves the room, they all gossip together. He gives them a plate of chicken, which they devour hungrily. He offers one to Gizmo, who declines. At the school, Mr. Hansen finishes examination and goes home. The clock says 2.20 a.m. and the mogwai in the lab managed to steal a sandwich from his desk. The next morning, Billy wakes up to discover five slimy cocoons on the floor. His mom asks if he got them wet or fed them after midnight. He says no, but suddenly notices that his clock still says 11.35 as the power cable has been cut. The mogwai at the school has undergone a similar transformation. Mr. Hansen explains that this is the pupil stage and they are undergoing a metamorphosis. The phone rings at Billy's house and his mom answers. Meanwhile, upstairs, the cocoons start to hatch. Gizmo watches on nervously. In the bank, Mrs. Deagle demands to know where Barney is. Billy tells her that he's on holiday. 
At school, during class, the cocoon starts to hatch. When the kids leave, Mr. Hansen inspects it and finds it is empty. He calls Billy, who says he's coming straight away. Mr. Hansen tries to lure the creature out with a candy bar. It starts to eat, but then grabs his hand under the table. By the time Billy arrives, Mr. Hansen is lying dead under the desk. Billy tries to pick up the phone, but a clawed hand scratches him. It escapes through the air vent. Billy attends to his injury, but the creature appears and throws medical supplies at him. Back at Billy's house, the creatures have tied Gizmo to a dartboard and are torturing him. Billy's mom hears a noise and goes upstairs with a knife. She enters his room to see the open cocoons. The phone rings and it's Billy who tells her to get out of the house, but the phone line is cut. She goes back downstairs and sees the gremlins. One of them sticks its head in the blender and she manages to switch it on and kill it. She stabs another and traps a third in the microwave and makes it explode. She takes more knives and searches for the others. One is hiding in the Christmas tree which falls on her. As she struggles, Billy walks in and knocks the gremlin into the fire where it burns. Stripe escapes through the window. Billy takes his mom to the doctors to tend to her injuries, while Billy goes back home and retrieves Gizmo. He then goes out to search for Stripe. He follows the footprints in the snow and finds him at the YMCA. Stripe pushes past him and jumps into the swimming pool. The water bubbles and glows green and from it emerges hundreds of gremlins. Billy goes to the police to report what is happening, but they don't seem to believe him. He shows them Gizmo to help convince them. The gremlins are coming down the street. Mr. Fetterman is in the house watching TV with his wife. The picture goes snowy, so he goes to check the antenna and hears a noise. The gremlins are in his snowplow and drive towards him, in through the house and kill him and his wife. They start to wreak havoc all around town. Billy continues to tell the police about Mogwai. Suddenly, they receive a phone call concerning the accident at the Fetterman's. Billy blames the gremlins, but they don't believe him. Stripe arrives at Mrs. Deagle's house. She comes down the stairs on a stair lift. She hears carolers at the door and goes to throw water on them, but it's singing gremlins. She locks the door and climbs into her stair lift, screaming. But a gremlin has tampered with the electrics and she zooms up the stairs and flies out through the window still in the chair. The police see this and other incidents occurring. A gremlin appears at the car window so they drive off, but the brake line has been cut, so they crash the car. Billy gets into his car and it starts for the first time. At Dory's tavern, the gremlins are drinking and scaring Kate. They're all having a great time. Kate realizes that they're scared of bright lights, so she uses a camera flash to try to escape. Billy arrives and his headlights scare the gremlins back. The car stalls again so they have to make a run for it. They hide in the bank. Kate tells him that now she has another reason to hate Christmas. She explains that when she was nine years old, she was waiting for her dad to come home, but he never did. After four or five days, she went to light a fire and found her dad in the chimney, dressed as Santa Claus. He was trying to surprise them, but had slipped and broke his neck and died instantly. That's when she found out that Santa Claus didn't exist. After a while, things seemed to have calmed down, so Billy and Kate leave the bank. They wonder where all the gremlins could have gone. Billy suspects that they will all go somewhere dark as it will soon be morning. They check out the movie theater and find them all there. They're all enjoying watching Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Billy and Kate go down to the boiler room. Billy lets some gas escape and lights a fire. The gremlins notice them, leave and chase them through the corridors. They manage to get out and lock the door behind them just as the movie theater catches a light, burning all the gremlins inside. However, Stripe had already escaped to the department store opposite. When Kate spots him, he runs and they follow him inside. He rides around on a skateboard with handfuls of candy. Billy gives Gizmo to Katie and tells her to find a light switch. They share a kiss. Billy grabs a baseball bat and searches for Stripe. Upstairs, Kate finds some switches and starts trying them all. One of the switches activates the water fountain. Billy pursues Stripe as he throws things in order to escape. Gizmo slips away from Kate and notices a light source. Stripe injures Billy and is then attacked with a chainsaw. Billy manages to hold him off with a baseball bat. Finally, Kate finds the light switch and Stripe is startled by the bright lights. He is dragged away by the working chainsaw. He comes to a standstill near the fountain where he grabs a gun. Rand arrives back in town. He stops outside the store and Barney jumps out of the car and into the store. From the fountain, Stripe fires the gun at Billy and dips his finger in the fountain. Gizmo is driving a remote control car and arrives in time to operate the blinds exposing the shop to light. Stripe is bathed in daylight and screams, 
dissolving into a pool of gore. Rand arrives and gives Billy his scarf to protect Gizmo from the light. As Billy inspects the fountain, the remains of Stripe leap out at him before it dissolves into a pile of goo. Back home, Billy's family are watching a news report about the previous night's events. Suddenly, the old Chinese man appears in the house to collect Gizmo. He talks to Gizmo and scolds Ran, telling him that they are not ready to keep a mogwai. Before Gizmo leaves, he asks to speak to Billy. He says, Bye, Billy. The old man says that perhaps one day, Billy will be ready. The old man walks off in the snow with Gizmo in his box. The movie ends with a warning from Ran that if something breaks in your house, look under the beds because you just might have a gremlin in your house. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.